Welcome back. In this video, we will create a pop-up calendar, just like the one behind me, that will allow the user to select a date and then store that date in a variable. This is computerscienceatschool.com. I am Jason Machin. Let's get coding. Okay, so first of all, I need to build my graphic user interface. Um, so from t, uh, tk inter um, import um, all, and then I need to import the calendar. So from uh, tk calendar import and start again. Okay, I now need to set my screen up. So I'm going to call this screen. This is just a variable. You can call it whatever you want. Some people call it window screen, etc. Um, TK, T being a capital, TK being a lowercase k, certainly on this version of Python. Um, and then I'm going to set up a minimum screen size. So screen dot min size. Um, and then I'm going to make mine 800 by 600. And then I will give my screen a title. And then the last thing I will do is give my screen a background color. Now I'm using a hexadecimal code for the background color. Um, if you go to Google and you uh, type in hex color codes, then you'll see a color chart for hexadecimal codes. This is a hex colorful light blue. You could also just type in blue or red or whichever color you want to use. Okay, so I will test this now just to check that window opens with no errors. And here we have the window that we've just created, light blue background and the title here. So next I need to now create the calendar. And if I create a new variable, I'm just going to call this my cal equals and then calendar again case sensitive here so capital C and then the parameters of this where do I want the cam calendar to go uh, on the screen and then there's a couple of uh, parameters I need to set up so if I do set mode equals and then uh, day and then lastly the date pattern um, if I make this equal for me, I'm going to do day, um, month, year, year. If it's American style, then you may do month, day, year. Or if your database is taking year, 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 then make sure you set this date pattern to match a backend database or whatever you're using. So that's created the calendar and give the calendar the parameters. I now need to place the calendar into my window. So my cal um, dot place, and then where do I want to place it? So uh, my screen is 800 by 600. I will say close to the center, so x is 350. And then near the top, I can say y is 100. And again, if I run this, I should now have, oh, I spelt mode wrong there. Um, okay, correct that. And then here we go. I have the calendar on the screen. We can't do anything with it yet. So next I will add a button. So once the user selects the date, we can click the button and that date will be saved. I will create a new variable. I'm just going to call this um, open cal and then that will equal my button and where will my button go on the screen and then what text do I want on that button um, I'm going to say select select date and then I need to say what I want to do once that button is pressed so what command do I want to run and I will create a function so once that button is clicked, that function will run. If I call that function um, select, select date, then here I can create that function. So define, select date, open brackets, close brackets, and then for now, just pass in that function. Now here I'm calling that function slightly different because normally we will put open brackets, close brackets there. In this instance, we don't need to put that open brackets, close brackets. This command will simply run that function. Lastly, for this button, I need to put the button on the screen. 
So this line creates the button, the next line I will need to place the button on the screen. So open cal uh, dot place, and then again, where do I want to place that? I will do 4 to 5 for the x, and then y equals, I guess, around 300. Uh, so if I run this now, hopefully my button will appear on the screen just below the calendar. Okay, here I have a button uh, with the text select date. Nothing will happen if I click that button at the moment um, because I've not yet created this function uh, which runs the command. So the last thing we have to do now is to create this function which gets the date when that button is pressed. So I can create a new variable here, for example, my date equals my cal. So here we've got my cal, um, then dot get underscore date, and that will get the date that is currently selected on this calendar. Um, next, if I just put the date that's been selected back onto the screen so the user can see what that date is. So I could do, for example, selected date, selected date, um, this is just another variable, you can call it anything you want, equals label, and then let's give that some text. Uh, so the text will equal, then the text will equal my date. So my date will equal the date that they've um, that was on the calendar when they pressed the button. So if I say my date, uh, so the last thing now is I need to place that button on the screen. So selected date um, dot place, and if I can place it just under this button, I know it's not very neat, but it's just to demonstrate how this works. So x equals 425, um, and then, so it's on the same horizontal as the other button, and then slightly lower, so if we do y equals 350, hopefully that will just be below this button. If I run, okay. So now, hopefully, when I select a date and then press this button, yes, that date is stored in the variable, and we're just showing here which date has been saved. Um, if I change that date, there we go, the 21st of the 8th, 20. And here you can see this is the week number. I hope you are enjoying these videos. Please feel free to ask any questions or leave any comments. And don't forget to like and subscribe.